Oh yeah. So I started backcountry hunting. My dad was kind of a backcountry hunter, but of course, you know, in, in the 60s and 70s, you, you, you loaded up a truck full of horses and, and you had all kinds of gear that you used and everything was big and heavy and of course, great technology. You know, so I, you know, I just basically, my style of hunting is to focus on the backcountry and gear has gotten so good today with all the gear we have. I mean, you know, you can be a total minimalist and I'm definitely a minimalist when it comes to packs and clothes and what I take and everything, but I'm gonna show you what I do for typical, this would be a typical elk hunt uh, pack and I can go for 10 days and I can stay for 10 days and I'm gonna show you all the gear you know, minus just a little bit of food, but I'm going to show you basically what I pack for food for dailies. And so we'll start over with it. This is a Mystery Ranch cabinet. It's not a new one. I think this is my fifth year on this pack. And what I like about this pack is it has a built-in shelf in it. You know, it has, it has compartments. It's, it's very compartmentalized. And I have literally, you know, tried to wreck this pack over the years. I packed out I don't know how many animals, I wouldn't even start to guess, but over five years I've used it a lot. I've, I've packed as many as two deer and Kodiak, you know, up to three miles. You can see it's still all dirty from my last hunt in Maui. But this is a great pack. They're super comfortable. They adjust in the torso, you know, and I'm not gonna try to sell you. There's a lot of great packs out there. You know, these guys make all the special forces packs. You know, they started with the SEAL team and moved on from there. And I just, I, I love the adjustability. The torso goes up and down, the belt's round, you know, the shoulders are round. And I'm gonna show you what I love about this pack. You know, and we're gonna pack all this stuff up on it. Um, this, is, this is a pop-up 28. Um, if I'm just going for like a three-day bivouac trip, this is more than adequate and I can get 90% of everything I have here on this pack, minus, you know, just a few things. So if it's just, uh, and this pack's lighter, it's smaller. And uh, so if it's just a three-day trip, I can use this pack. If I'm going and I'm, I'm getting really serious and I'm gonna be in for a few days, I'm taking this cabinet. Doesn't look like much and, and it compresses down, this pack compresses down to just a very small, thin, you know, pack. And so, you know, it, it, it is just an awesome pack. So we're gonna go over clothes first. And so this, basically what I'm doing, and you know, there's a lot of great clothing companies out there. We don't, we don't sell clothes beside logo wear anymore, so I don't really care about brands. There's some great clothes out there. It's companies that are just focusing on clothes. Personally, years ago, um, I started with Justin Charles, uh, Marina Wool. And it was made by Matthews Archery, and I'm a Matthews dealer, so of course I started there. It was the first time I'd ever been around Marina Wool. Super comfort. So today, you know, Justin Charles isn't around anymore. Um, this is Smart Wool. I usually have, I'll have always, regardless of what the weather's gonna do, you know, I will have, you know, undergarments. I'll have a top and a bottom. And then, you know, this is First Light, it's Marina Wool. Um, this is a First Light Puffy. These are, these are the clothes I'm gonna take um, on my trip every time. And I'm just taking one set of clothes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pack a bunch of clothes. What I do pack a bunch of is, is socks. I'll, if I'm going for six days, if I'm planning for six days, I'm gonna take three pairs of socks. I'm gonna get two days out of every you know, pair of socks. You know? And so that's, that's one thing that I'm gonna use you know, and then I'm gonna take extras of. The other thing is, is I, I don't care what my pants are, I don't care how much they cost, I cut them off. And I'm sorry, I just do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run a marathon in long pants, and I'm not gonna hunt in the backcountry and pack out an elk six to 10 to 14 bloody miles and leapfrog meat and all that with a buddy of mine. I'm not gonna do it with long pants on, I'm sorry. Clothing companies that make long pants, I, if I'm gonna get my shins tore up, I always take gators, and there's great gators. I love these gators. These are some first light gators. I'm sure there's some great gators out. I've always got gators. If it's hot and I'm not getting my, my shins tore up, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna wear my pants with my shorts. If, if there's a lot of brush and things that can tear me up, I'll wear a pair of gators. I'm still cooler, I drink less water, I'm not as heated up. I don't have the resistance like pants does because usually I'm hunting you know, and traversing up and down and pants are, are resistant. So, and I've always got a pair of gloves. I like light gloves for the early season, late season. I, I take a pair of heavy insulated waterproof gloves. I've always got gloves. So, and then headgear. 
I'm not going anywhere without headgear. I was in Wyoming one time. We were back in, you know, back country for about three or four days. We had 40 mile an hour winds that probably never got above 20 degrees. And this is September in the Bighorns. And, you know, if we wouldn't have had headgear, I like the headgear too that could just be a stocking cap with eye holes. Because, you know, if you're in those conditions, you don't want, you don't want frostbit nose, you don't want frostbit, you know, ears. You want to be able to hunt, it's bad conditions. You know, if you've got the gear, you're not going to get 86 because you're back there and you don't have the gear. So meat prep, we're going to go to meat prep. So I always, I've got these little lightweight gloves. I've got a, a good garbage bag. I mean, you don't want to skimp because I'm going to be loading and unloading and I do not want this pack soaked up with blood. So I have to have a garbage bag. Lots of good meat sacks out there. You know, um, these meat sacks here are uh, caribou bags. These are caribou bags, they're lightweight. These are old. I mean, I've had them for a long time. You can see they're all stained. You know, I used them, I even used them a month ago in Maui, you know, sacked up my Axis deer and hauled it out with that. You know, I got an outdoor edge knife, I like them. I've got a Stucky knife, a Dan Stucky knife. It's, it's my favorite knife, it's on my pack here. It's always on my pack. I can do like six animals with this. It's, you know, Dan's renowned knife maker. He makes his own scabbards. You know, they're a crazy good knife. You know, the edge will hold for a long time, but I do use an outdoor edge knife. This is kind of a crazy deal. I don't even know this arc. Um, you know, I don't sell any of this stuff. It's just, um, it was just given to me. It's kind of a crazy, it's like a, it's a, it's a bone saw and I always have a saw, you know, cause I have, you, you need to saw the horns out of your animal. And so, you know, this thing is a sawzall, basically. You know, so it's kind of a trick deal. Um, it's got a regular sawzall type blade application deal here. So that just clicks like that, and you've got a saw, so you can saw your horns out. So you don't want to be carrying, you don't want to be backcountry, kill a big bull. You know, if you want to mount him or whatever, if you don't, you know, if you cape the animal out, you don't want to, to carry the skull out. You can saw it out. And so, you know, this is just a trick deal, you know, and it comes with all kinds of other blades. I don't even know why I carry the other blades in there, probably because I've never taken them out and I should. It would be less weight, so next time I do that, I probably will. So anyway, that's my meat prep stuff. I carry all that in this compartment on this mystery ranch. It's right here. All, all my meat prep, my knives, that saw, the plastic bag, all of it goes in there. All right, moving on to toiletries. I carry, I got Benadryl in here, I've got, I've got ibuprofen, I've got some Rolaids, get bad stomach, that kind of thing. You know, I've got athletic tape, I've got thread to repair bow stuff, I've got some call stuff, I've got, you know, I've, I've got um, hydrocortisone cream, you know, I carry, I carry that kind of stuff for toiletries. I like baby wipes, you know, uh, these Burt's Bees are, are awesome baby wipes. There's all kinds of baby wipes out there. You know, it's, it's, that's just something that's super necessary. This is, this is my battery pack. I keep my batteries in just a little pack like this. I've got a battery for my rangefinder, and then I've got batteries for my headlamps. And, and so I carry all that in just a pouch. Everything, all this goes in one of my pouches. Um, I can't say enough about athletic tape. I carry electrical tape and athletic tape both. You know, if you're in a bad situation, it could save your life. I mean, athletic tape's just one of those things that's a first aid deal that you just can't go without. Fire starter, I don't go anywhere without fire starter. I carry at least three lighters. Um, all the time, all this stuff just goes in here. This is a cleaning solution when you're blind. You have a verifier from specialty archery in your string. That's a verifier. That's cleaner for that. You know, of course, I've always got, you know, two picks. I've got extra wind detector. And, you know, this is a mystery ranch binocular case. There's a lot of good binocular cases. Kind of like this one. I can keep diaphragm calls, you know, right here in front. It's got a little pouch here. You know, I've got an old pair of Geovids. I've had these, gosh, I've probably had these 14, 15 years. When they first came out, I got a pair. Absolutely love them. Rangefinder binoculars. If you can afford them, buy them. It's just one thing less to carry in the backcountry. And, you know, these were old. I, I actually can reach across and hit the rangefinder. The newer ones, the rangefinder buttons are on this side. It's just one of those things that you're carrying less of. I don't have to have a pair of binoculars and a rangefinder. And so those, those are a must. 
Um, predator call, you know, I always got a predator call, you know, with me at all times. I carry two headlamps, a backup in case one goes bad. You know, I also have a backup release, you know, that I always carry. Camera gear, I mean, I carry a fanny pack in front, and I'll put all this stuff on you, and I'll, on, on me, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm hunting. But I've got, I've got a fanny pack, and this is a mirrorless camera. It's a Sony, there's a bunch of mirrorless out. What's cool about the mirrorless is not only you can change the lenses, and so I have a couple lenses in here. You know, I've got, a, I've got a wide angle lens, and then I can carry my battery. So this is my camera pouch. I got extra SD cards, everything in here. And, and of course that goes in my pack, but you know, extra batteries. And then of course this goes on the front, you know, kind of like a man purse, but that way when I'm hunting, I've always got my camera, I've got my binoculars here, I've got my camera here. So if I want to take pictures, you know, I'm not digging in my pack to get my camera out. I know a lot of guys are running phones now. I can't get a, I, I can't do a phone. I, I've got to do a good camera. It's just, it's just built into me. I grew up with cameras. I love cameras. I know phones are fantastic now, but so tents. There's a lot of good tents out there. This is an old, old Kilo. Easton Kilo tent. I love it. It's a three man. This is a crazy tent. It only weighs two and a half pounds. It, it goes in a small oval stuff sack and I'm going to stuff it and put it on there. I love it for the size. It's getting old. It's, gosh, I think it's close to 10 years old. I've used it a ton. It's all stained. I've had it in bad weather, um, but it's a great tent and uh, I, I haven't been able to wreck it. It's got carbon poles. And, and it's big, you know, it's not a small tent, you know, it's got a little vestibule, it's, 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 it's big, you can put three guys in this thing, so if you're in bad weather and everything, you need to get your gear in there, I mean, it, it's, it's really a sweet tent, you know, they don't make these anymore, I don't know, you know, I'm not trying to sell you on this, it's probably not going to be able to find one unless you can find one used or online or, or somebody still has one in stock. But it's just a sweet tent, and uh, there's a lot of good tents out there. You know, uh, I, I think Marmot sells a good tent. You know, Hillenburg sells good tents. I mean, the key is is try to get the best one you can for the money. I think, uh, Kellen, what one do you have? Uh, MSR. MSR, I think, has one this big, and it's really light. It's like two and a half pounds. So, yeah. you know, great tent. Um, Water storage. I always have two water bottles. I don't care what they are. I've always got two water bottles in case if, if I get to a water source in the day, I'm going to drink as much as I can through a wall. Uh, I like these dip and drink water filters. There's a whole bunch of different brands out. I just get a good one and, and uh, don't really care what they are. They just and, and so I drink as much water midday as I can so I'm not thirsty. I'll fill up all my water. So if I'm going to stay on a rigid night, I got cooking water. I got water for cooking. I got water for drinking, I got water till midday the next day. And so, then gets to cooking gear. So there's great cooking gear out stuff. You know, this is my typical. If I'm going for a long time, this is my typical. I got, you know, I carry a tin cup. You know, this is, this is my stove. I love these things and, and I, I don't even know what brand it is. Um, gosh, I, I came, that's sad. I, I, I don't sell any of this stuff, but Kellen, what is that? It says Optimus. Optimus. So this is an Optimus. I don't know. I just buy them. They're <laughs> awesome. The thing tiny is a little, little thing. tiny thing. It flips out. And basically, my pot, this is, a, this is a titanium pot. And they're pretty cool. I mean, you can buy them at your backpacker store. It doesn't weigh anything. And this, this little stove screwed on one of these MS uh, R bottles will turn this thing bloody red and boil water in like a minute. And so for, for all your, and then it's got measuring in there so you can measure out how much you need for your, your freeze dried food or whatever. You know, I always have bedtime tea. You know, this, you know, if, you, if you're making anything that you fry, like you can say you killed a grouse or something through the day, it comes with a little fry pan and it, it goes together as a lid and it comes in a kit. It's got a little stuff sack. We're gonna put all this together. And, and then, so I keep everything, even my toothbrush, I throw everything in there. This is kind of a cool little deal. I got it as a gift, um, and it's it's made by Outdoor Edge, and uh, it's it you know everybody. I used to break like three or four of these, and they're not very long, and your hands get dirty trying to dig into your freeze dried. But this crazy thing, if I can figure out how to get it apart, um, 
This is a spoon and a fork combination, and it even has a knife on it. So crazy deal, and it don't weigh anything. That's kind of cool. And so, you know, for you know, longer spoons, so you can get in there and everything. So that's kind of a cool deal, you know, but that's basically my cookware in a nutshell. And, uh, you know, there, and, and so I have, I have a dry bag for food. So um, we'll, go over, we'll go over food a little bit. What I do before I go, and I've done it for so many years, I know what my diet needs to be. And so I try to get stuff that's low in sodium. I uh, try to get stuff that's low in, in, I don't like soy, you know. I try to get products that don't have a bunch of soy lectum in it. I always take um, tuna fish, these little tuna fish bags. I've always got tuna fish for the day. I try to get good protein bars, oatmeal, um, you know. Uh, guys that eat candy, I mean, you can do candy bars. I mean, there's a lot of good candy bars out there. They're full of sugar, but, you know, guys are burning it up out there. You know, freeze-dried, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of freeze-dried out there. This Wise Company, there's just some things, I love the flavor, this cheesy lasagna, I could eat it every night, probably for the rest of my life and love it. But what's cool is, see how thin those are? These are full two serving, but they're so thin, I can get six of these compared to any other type of freeze-dried. I can get six of these in my pack where I could get like three of any others because three of them are gonna be like this. So I'll take, I, I wanna average one and a half of these a day. So if I'm going for six days, I'm gonna take like eight or nine of these with me. And I can easily get them in my pack because they're so small. That way if I get hungry, if I do, you know, if I, you know, sometimes in a day you're gonna eat more food than another day. I could sit down and I could fire up one of those and, and, and I could get plenty of nutrition. So every day I budget out what I'm gonna eat for how many days I'm going. So and the other thing is, um, is comfort. You know, Kellen talked about comfort. So um, bed rolls, I'm picky about bed rolls. Um, this X bed is the best I've ever found and I've tried a ton of them. I probably got a whole attic full of everything you can buy. And I have a, I have a touchy back, uh, and so I want something that's going to give me comfort. This, this x bed is the best I've ever seen. It has this mesh on top, so your sleeping bag doesn't slide around. Everybody's gone to sleep, and you wake up, and you're off of your sleeping bag, laying on your buddy, or just laying on the ground. These things will keep your sleeping bag on it. And then it comes, every one of those x beds they come with this crazy thing. And four, it's got blowing it up since so everybody goes dude that thing is giant i don't want to sit there and and puff and puff and puff and blow that thing up all night and and be lightheaded right so four of these this thing four of these will pump that up and then it's got a valve on it so when you pull it out you don't lose all the air and then you can make it you can make this as hard as you want like right now that thing's hard it took me four of these and just a little bit of air pressure and i had this thing rock hard so they're way cool this doubles as a dry bag. So you can use this, it's tough, and, and it's, just a, it's just a regular big, you know, dry bag that goes with you that you can put your stuff in. And so, you know, um, sleeping bags. There's a lot of great sleeping bags out there. Again, everybody's making a good sleeping bag. So this is a Marmot Pinnacle, and it's a 15 degree bag, it's ancient. I probably had this thing 12 years, and I've used the tar out of it. And if you ever rip a hole in one of these, I patch this sucker. I've got patches all over this thing. Another piece of similar nylon and super glue will patch it so you don't lose your feathers. And so if you do rip one, and you can see this thing is, you know, it's losing feathers right there. It's old. I should probably get another one, but it still works. I love, you know, I, I love this bag. And it's a 6'4". So I'm 6'1 I'm, I'm and a half. And so I... You know, this one I can, I can disappear in because it's made for a guy that's 6'4", so I got the taller one. Um, these little tiny pillows go in this little tiny bag. I mean, they've got ton. everybody makes one of these, but this one goes in an extra small stuff bag. There again, when you're out there, you know, comfort's king, and so you get that strapped around, you can just sleep like a king. And so the last part of it is calls. You know, I, I've got a bunch of different calls I like. I mean, that's, that's a Phelps, uh, that's a Primos. That's, this one's made by old Ralph Delane from Avon Sons. It's a surround sound bugle tube. It's the craziest thing ever. It sounds like a Jurassic Park bugle. And you can't tell where the sound's coming from. So this, this is crazy too. Um, so we've killed most of our bulls raking. It's just kind of a secret. We won't talk a lot about it, but I carry a horn for raking. 
and uh, I think they can tell the difference in the sound from a stick to that, so just my theory. I'm a decoy guy. Um, you got to be secure with your manhood to wear this, <laughs> right? And everybody's like, dude, that's Killing dangerous. It. I've seen all kinds of stuff. Really? I mean, where I hunt, there's really nobody. I'm just going to put it on. I'm not wearing it all the time. I'm putting it on if you're out front, you're calling and everything. You know, they're deadly on elk, they're deadly on deer. I mean, you know, a buddy of mine's making these. You know, this is, this is uh, uh, the Booner uh, decoy, and it's Brian Johnson. He's, he's a, he does all the sculpting for Reinhardt. That little elk that you're seeing all over, he makes those, he makes these. Um, he's got deer, antelope, sheep. He's got every species of animal in these, in these decoy hats. And so, if you're a decoy guy, these things are pretty cool. You put them on a good hat, and you not a snapback, and you can strap them right on the back of your pack. Of course, you don't use them during a rifle hunt or any of that. So you know, but gosh darn it, that thing looks like an elk. And if you're on your knees, you know, and you're spinning that around, a bull's going to see that man. He's coming right to you. So we're going to pack all this up, and this is this is going to be enough gear, and we're going to weigh it, and it's going to be enough gear to stay for 10 days. I'll add some some food to the whole thing. So I'm going to get started. Yep. Believe it or not, all this. All this stuff you see here is going in that little bag. So watch them work with magic here. you can see what I've got. I've got. I've got this weighted out here. We're weighing right at 31 pounds for that gear. And you know that'll fluctuate a little bit, you know, versus how much food and water and everything that, that uh, you're going to carry. But you know, here we go. I'll throw it on. And I got my man purse. And of course, you know, what I love about that is I got my camera right here. Comes out just that fast. If I need to film anything, take some pictures, I want photographs. You know, I'm taking pictures of my buddies. It's right there. Does video, does photography, you know. And uh, I, I like these lightweight puffy jackets. They're warm. You know, you don't have to wear them. You can just, you know, if it's warm weather. And uh, the, this, this is an old, old fanny pack. It's got a little loop on top. So I usually, I usually thread my belt through it so it helps it hold it up. Snap that up, get it tight, reverse pulls, you know, throw. One thing that's kind of cool about, you know, the pack setup is I never carry my bow. My bow sits right there all the time. And I can fall, fall down and get up. I can get down and go under stuff. My hands are free, you know. And all day, you know, I'm either, I'm either blowing a call or, you know, I'm glassing or I got my camera. My hands are free. I'm not picking my bow up all the time. And it just sits up there. It's a perfect balance. And I, I kind of like these bow slickers. Um, I don't necessarily hunt with it up there, but you know, for transport and everything, it keeps my string and my cams from getting dinged up, or if I'm hiking in in the dark, or if I'm killed something and I got my pack full of meat and I'm hiking out, I'll throw it on that way. I'm not damaging anything. The bow comes off just that quick and I'm up. You know, so for me, it's just convenience. And you know, I could, if it's, if it's really cold weather, <laughs> I can, I can hike with my hands in my pockets and keep my hands, you know, without gloves on, you know, in case I got action or that kind of thing, you know, but it's just my setup. I've done it for years. I hunt kind of the same, same kind of, you know, everything I hunt, you know, either more or less clothes. There again, I've got my gaiters, but I got my shorts, you know, so, you know, I'm not going to get my shins torn up. If it's hot weather, the gaiters are off here in my pack. So that's kind of my bivouac setup. Gives me a lot of freedom. I can wander. I'm good for 10 days. I've got enough food, you know, for 10 days. And just wherever I wind up, I can pack it up quick. I know he sped that up, but 
generally it takes me about 25, 30 minutes to roll up camp and I'm good to go. Because I didn't have every, I don't, every, don't, I'll take my sleeping bag, my tent and everything out. So, you know, and what I like about a cabinet being a minimalist pack is, you know, I used to run big bag packs and after day three, everything was jumbled up in there. I can do dry bags, I've got categorization, I know where everything's at and, you know, by day three, I'm still super organized. You know, rather than having a big, big bag pack and I'm shoving everything in there and then I got, I need one thing and I got to dig all the way in and I don't even know where it's at and I think I lost it, but then I get home from the trip and I found it. Anybody that's bivouacked a lot has been in those situations. So I like this system, you know, everything fits on there and I'm 31 pounds. And 31 pounds, I can easy hike all day, feel comfortable, I can hunt, I can shoot, I can stalk. You know, I can drop my pack and do it, or I can wear my pack and do it, you know. So, you know, it's not a lot of weight, and I train all year to make sure that I'm comfortable in the backcountry. So, anyway, enjoy your backcountry hunts. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Everybody does it different. I was saying this is the only way. I mean, everybody's got their methods, but, you know, this works for me, and uh, keeps me comfortable. And I'm a sissy when it comes to cold weather, so I got everything I need, and it keeps me good. So, have a good time in the backcountry, and good hunting. So there you have it guys. I think that was an awesome in-depth review of, of what he's running and, and why he's running it. Uh, like I said, everything he's got has a purpose here. He's been doing this for a long time. He killed a lot more stuff than I have. So I figured he'd be the man to tell you how, how to run this stuff. So hope that was helpful. As usual, please feel free to comment in the, the comment section below. We love feedback. If I can't answer it, I work with him every day. So I'll, I'll get on him and, and he'll tell you what, how it is. Um, as usual, jump on over to Instagram. Check that out if you haven't already. Inside underscore out underscore precision. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, keep it in the middle.